the main philosophy of my approach to physics in general is just to put things really in space-time, not just only mathematical relation, which is totally abstract. We would like, and a lot of people also, I mean, Richard Feynman and other people, felt that you need to return to something called space-time, also Einstein. But the space-time I'm talking about is very different because I think space-time should be thought of as made of a lot of points, not lines, discrete, not continuous, but it's discrete in a very special way. And to explain that, I would like to give this example. If you look to the television screen from afar, you see images of the world as you know it, and it seems as if everything is continuous. But if you come nearer and nearer to the screen of the television, especially if the fidelity is not very high, you will notice it's made of little points. And all these faces and all these images, which you know it's from real life, they are not continuous at all. They are made of points. And the more points you have, the more dense these points are compact on the screen, and the higher the quality of the picture you're looking at, giving you the illusion of a continuous world, which isn't. No matter how many points they can put together, it's trillion, but still it's finite. But the amazing thing about the geometry of Equis, which was invented by a very famous German, George Cantor, is that it's made from Cantor sets, and a Cantor set has infinitely many points. Not only infinitely many points, but uncountably infinitely many points. So Cantor really was one of the first people to realize that infinite, and there are things larger than infinite, called uncountably infinite, and so on. There are hierarchy of infinity. And these ideas were at the time so abstract that most people couldn't imagine that they are applicable in physics, but they are and it is not applicable to any physics like in quantum physics. And using the geometry, which based on the idea of Cantor, I developed this space-time theory, which is called E infinity now. But the idea can be explained by looking at the television. From far, everything seems as if it's continuous, but when you look with higher and higher resolution, you realize you are dealing with an enormous amount of points. But a part of all that and a large part of what my theory is all about is already covered in the marvelous interview. And the thing which we didn't talk about was the application. A couple of Chinese professors, applied mathematicians and physicists, have applied E infinity to nanotechnology. Now, I have been always a fan of nanotechnology, and I tried to promote it in my country in order to solve the unsolvable, which is the economical problem, which all of the developing countries are suffering from, and I've seen a nanotechnology solution. Only, I was not interested in nanotechnology. I was interested only in high energy physics, which is for the developing country is a luxury. This is something, an arena for the work of people like the United States of America, entire Europe together, or Japan and China. This is the only people who can compete because it requires enormous amount of investment, and the yield, the return, is not immediate, and you need to wait for a very long time, and maybe nothing come out of that, but then you need to know. And only country with an enormous scientific and financial resources like the United States can afford that. But for the developing country, there's another thing which is fantastic possibility, open now, it's nanotechnology. The reward is enormous compared to the investment. You don't need to wait years and years for this reward and it's translated immediately into economic terms. And when I remember one of your most fantastic economists, Nobel laureate Stiglitz, he really reduced now economic to one thing, the scientific excellence. It's no more only an element. It is all what the future is all about, not raw material, not oil. In the very long future, when you really took a giant leap with your imagination, it's going to be science and not oil in the Middle East, which decides on everything. That will be the difference between the poor and the rich, those who have science and those who don't have science. So nanotechnology is a step in, in that direction. I was not interested in it, but I have, out of honesty, to say it's far more important than the field I'm working in, which interests me, but it's not so important for my country. But suddenly now, I found from friend, Professor Ji Huan He, from Donghua University in China, Shanghai, and several others, they're starting writing paper on nanotechnology where they discovered that 
e infinity theory is their tool uh, to solve a lot of problems. Nanotextile, this is a subject which the People Republic of China is excelling in, uh, particularly in Shanghai, you know, is, there's a lot of such innovative new technology based on new scientific methods like nanotechnology. So I felt nanotechnology is so important, and thanks God my theory play a role there. I never envisaged that. I, I was searching for something uh, which scientifically was interesting for me and philosophically satisfying for my uh, background and education. And it's very, very gratifying to find suddenly that it has really an immediate application and something which flew immediately to economics so it can be useful for all these developing countries. And I read a fantastic article by a leading American historian, and I read it just in Newsweek a couple of days ago. And he said, we can beat the shortage of oil and the widespread or rocketing of terrorist acts and terrorism by nanotechnology, by science. And this is a fantastic idea because this is all the time what I felt. If you can detect everything with technology, we don't need to suffer the indignity we have now in, in, in flying in an airport, for instance. And at the same time, the very reason for the existing, or some of, at least, of the major reason for the existing recruiting of people to do this outrageous act is poverty and ignorance. And you can treat that by raising the standard of life. So here is NAM technology solving two major problems, dependence of industrial world on oil and terrorism in one go by science and not by any other violent means. And all that coming again from somebody who was dreaming about what is space-time. It's a fantastic thing to be a scientist, really, and I, I'm very grateful that destiny or whatever has given me the chance that I could do something in that direction. If we are not open-minded about everything, we are looking ourselves in. The, the most beautiful thing I found in America, and I was always a fan of the American spirit, of accepting anybody with new idea and saying, why not? That I have not found anywhere in the world, like in America. And I think that was one of the key for the incredible shooting uh, into the sky of American science and American industry and all that. It was based on this ability of being open-minded. In Europe or in country with an enormous tradition like Egypt, we have a lot of advantage in many aspects. But then, not this one, you know, no, we've done it uh, all the time this way, why should we change? Americans are very different. When I was in Los Alamos and when I was in Cornell, why not? We've done it always this way, so why not do we do it another way? And I must say, I never felt so happy like the time I was in America. I really enjoyed that very much, it only was very far away from the Middle East and where my obligation was, that was the only reason I returned to Europe in order just to be nearer to the Middle East. The center of knowledge has moved decisively to the United States, and now maybe it is there is a competition from the Far East, and the Middle East needs peace. That is the first requirement we need there in order to establish our great traditions there, and I have been dreaming for this for years and years, and I was a great admirer of Rabin, and when we were about to have peace, we were about to stop all this nonsense and start working together in science and technology and humanity and all that, and then he was unfortunately assassinated, and things then 